on the farm surrounded by olive trees. Most of the olive trees that you see were transplanted here from other places. Okay, they're very strong. They almost always survive. We're also at a special time of year. If you look closely, you will see the little olives growing on the olive trees. Olive trees also live a very long time. This is our oldest olive tree. It's more than 400. And they can grow into the thousands of years. I want to draw your attention over here to the new shoots growing up from the roots of the tree. We have a special word for these in Hebrew. The word is netzer. Netzer. Do you mind trying to say netzer, please? Netzer. Thank you. Netzer is where we get the word for Nazareth from. Nazareth. Netzer, Nazareth. So in a sense, Nazareth means new shoot. Right? So the nets out, and they're the babies of the tree, right? To plant a new olive tree, we cut the nets out with a piece of root that it's growing on, and we transplant it, and this becomes the new olive tree. Okay? So, when the prophet Isaiah, in chapter 11, verse 1, talks about this picture, it's very suggestive of a descendant. He says, a new shoot will grow up from the roots of Jesse. Now Jesse is the father of King David, who is the forefather of Yeshua, Jesus, according to his human genealogy. And so we believe that this is a prophetic picture that is fulfilled in Jesus' life. Our shepherd Hello. and our small flock of sheep. Now of course the picture of the shepherd and his sheep is very very biblical. So probably the most famous example is Psalm 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd. And then Yeshua, Jesus comes and in John chapter 10 he reuses these same pictures to talk about himself. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the sheep hear my voice and follow after me. Jesus is constantly using these pictures to refer to himself. For us, if we're Christians, then we take this in stride. Oh yeah, of course. But for Jesus' first century audience, a Jewish audience, this would be terribly shocking. Right? Here's a man. He's real man. Jesus was a man, eats, sleeps, cries, gets tired. And he's using language that up until this point in history was exclusively used for God. So it would have been very, very difficult for Jesus' listeners to understand. We now understand, because of the New Testament, that Jesus had to be fully man and fully God and therefore sinless. And so his death on the cross can pay for our sins. If he wasn't sinless, then he's just a martyr. 
And Jesus also says, right, talks about the parable of the 99 and the 1. He's constantly using the image of shepherd and sheep. Very significant. Was significant in the Old Testament and is significant in the New Testament as well. Thank you, Elijah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I love you so much.